Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at DSA taking a look at some of the really cool guns in their reference collection, like this, the ugliest PKM ever known to humanity. I think the PKM is a pretty good looking gun. I didn't realize that it could be, in fact, made this bad looking. And yet, the Romanians pulled it off with some help from Bruger and Tomet. So what we have here is a Romanian experimental uh, folding stock paratrooper version of the PKM. Now, Romania adopted the PKM in its standard form in 1966. It was their Model 66. It was manufactured by Kugir, uh, the main arms, state-run arms manufacturing concern in Romania, and it was a standard weapon for the Romanian military. Wasn't something that the paratroops got, though, because it was too long, too heavy, not really suitable for paratroop drops. Now, in the 1990s, the early 90s, Cougar decides to maybe change that. Um, and presumably at that point, money is tight, they're looking for opportunities and options, and so they develop a shortened folding stock version of the PKM, which is this. So let's take a closer look at it. All right, let's start with a quick look at the markings here. This is serial number one. Uh, you can see our manufacturer's marks, a PKM SF, so PKM Special Forces, uh, 762 by 54 rimmed, and of course this one was imported by DSA, which is why it's there now, which is why I'm filming it there right now. Now, if you want to make a gun more compact for paratroopers, there are two pretty obvious places to start. One is make the front end shorter, and the other is make the back end shorter. So let's start with the front end, that's the simple one. Pretty simple, just cut the barrel down. And so this has a barrel that's a couple inches shorter than the standard PKM barrel. Not really anything special going on, it still has the same gas regulator here, but substantially shorter barrel. While we are up here, this would be the time to address the handguard, because that is not a standard Romanian, or frankly any sort of standard PKM handguard. That is a tri-rail handguard made specifically for this gun by Bruger and Tomet, as sort of an experiment like what would fit onto this? Well, you're going to want, uh, if you're going to modernize the PK, if you want something that is a lower profile, lighter, smaller uh, bipod, as well as making the gun a little bit more potentially fireable from the shoulder, well, you're going to want attachment uh, compatibility up here. And then this is Bruger and Tomet's version of the grip pod. So it's a vertical front grip that has a bipod built into it. Um, does not have this particular one doesn't have any rotating stops. So that acts as a pretty basic, pretty simple, but you know, basically functional bipod for the gun, and it folds up there when not in use. Bruger also put together this uh, rail attachment to go over the top cover. Um, you can see they've attached it here using the standard bolt that holds the top cover in place. Um, aluminum, lets you mount an optic up there of probably a red dot, but whatever it is you're looking for. It also it comes pretty close to obstructing the carry handle, but eh, you can still sort of use it. All right, and then the mechanically substantial element, which is putting a folding stock on a PKM. So it's a side folder. We've got a big button on top here. Push that in, and you can pivot this stock all the way around to the side. The design of this otherwise somewhat odd looking remnant of a buttstock is uh, influenced by the belt can. So this holds a 100 round belt, and they have designed the stock such that it can unfold with plenty of clearance so that you can still carry that belt drum, or belt box, on the gun. Note that there is this big strap bracket attached to the side of the receiver. That is to lock the stock in the folded position. We have this clamp uh, on the side of the, the small, uh, like the, the new remaining little butt pad section. And there's a lever on the opposite side, so I can push this in to unlock it. And when it's in this position, it'll just lock into place there. What they've essentially done here is just to change the rear trunnion of the gun to have this hinge mechanism instead of a socket for a regular buttstock. So there, right there, is our locking catch. You can see it's got a lug that drops down when I push the button. 
and that is going to lock into this hook. So the hinge is off on the left side of the gun, the stock has this big extra brace on it, and it just snaps into place there. It is a very heavy duty, very sturdy stock that I can't imagine would have any problems with durability or coming loose while you're shooting. They gave it just a little bit of a wood butt plate there still because they wanted this latch attachment and they wanted to give it a regular PKM butt plate so that it could get the standard shoulder rest. So you can still flip that up. Note, it's still got the hole for a cleaning kit in there, but of course there's no longer any space, so they didn't bother to drill a hole in the stock itself. And there you go, one shortened folding Romanian PKM. All right, I wanted to see what this was actually gonna be like to shoot. So courtesy of DSA, we brought it out to the range here. I've got a hundred rounds of ammo linked up for it. Let's go ahead and let's see. Take this guy, pop this out in our belt box. There we go. Close that up. And then snap that. Got our belt box on. As I mentioned previously, the stock is cut specifically to fold around the belt box. Plop that down there. All right, so the things I am curious about here are A, what's it like to run a PKM off of a grip pod, uh, which I can't really, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to reach that. We're gonna depend on the grip pod as a bipod and I'm gonna be holding on to the belt box here. And I'm also curious if we notice any real difference either from the stock, which I doubt, or from the short barrel, perhaps changing the rate of fire. Now, pull around off of our belt and we're good to go. That's really kind of doesn't feel any different than a regular PKM, to be totally honest. That bipod's definitely not as uh, stable, but you know I'm not really doing that much dynamic stuff with it. For what it's worth, the Romanians did make a shortened bipod to fit this, uh, or a bipod, a, a standard PK style bipod to fit this gun. Just we also have the BNT uh, railed grip on it with the grip pod. I honestly can't really tell much difference between the rate of fire on this and a regular PKM. Um, it runs pretty much like it should. It's not like there's anything, you know, fantastically mechanically different here. We got the shorter barrel, which is just a quick detached barrel, and we got the folding stock, which doesn't impact the rate of fire at all. But in total, only 400 of these were made according to the best information that I have, two runs of 200 guns each. They were tested by Romanian paratroopers and Romanian special forces, but neither service opted to actually adopt the gun. Why? Well, most likely because the Cold War was coming to an end. The Soviet bloc was falling apart, the Soviet Union was falling apart, and the likelihood of, you know, all out World War III against Western Europe was not really looking all that likely, and so the importance of more offensively uh, themed troops, like paratroops, was a lot less important. Like, we don't really need to worry about arming the guys that we're going to drop into West Germany, because we're not going to be dropping anybody into West Germany anymore. On top of that, money is of course tight for the military, tight for the government, um, and it just this, this was an extravagance that just wasn't justifiable. Also, perhaps it's probably a lot easier to get bribes if you're buying foreign equipment rather than domestic equipment. It may have had a little tiny part of it as well. So instead, Kugir looks to sell these on the export market, and they make, like I said, 400. They don't actually manage to sell any, well, they don't manage to get any significant contracts, but the guns all sell. And so you end up with a few cool examples of them floating around from place to place, like this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, a big thanks to my friends in Romania for helping me dig up the backstory on this. And of course, a big thanks to DSA for giving me access to film it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.